This is a special report from ABC News Digital. I'm Dan Kleffler in New York with an ABC News Digital special report. A close call at the International Space Station. An astronaut risked drowning inside his own helmet during a spacewalk yesterday. And today, they are digging deep into that suit to see what the problem was. Italy's Luca Parmitano was in the first hour of what was supposed to be a six-hour walk outside the station when he began to feel something like water filling up in his suit. We're joined now from Houston with the latest on the investigation by ABC's Gina Sinceri. And Gina, when we first heard about this, it was almost unfathomable how something like this could have happened. You know, Dan, NASA, in its wildest imaginations, never envisioned this scenario. An astronaut drowning in a spacesuit on a spacewalk 260 miles above planet Earth. You know, they run redundant training, they troubleshoot, they do all kinds of scenarios, but this was one they had never envisioned. Now, this morning here at the Johnson Space Center, where I am today, uh, Luca Parmitano was conferring with a team of engineers on the ground. They're ripping that spacesuit apart, trying to figure out where all that water came from. There's a drink bag on the spacesuit. It's not like there are that many options when you're out on a spacewalk. They've got a drink bag which holds 32 ounces, and then there's a cooling system that runs through the spacesuit that holds about another gallon of water. That's enough to have drowned him, and as rapidly as his spacesuit and helmet was filling up, NASA said that was a very real possibility, which is why they aborted the spacewalk. Gina, do they know how much water actually got inside the suit? They think between one liter and five liters of water was actually in the suit and the helmet. How much was in the helmet, they're not quite sure. What you need to remember about water in space is that it doesn't dribble, there aren't, you know, rivulets of it. It turns into a big glob. Luca posted a video, ironically, on YouTube Monday. Do you remember the Karen Nyberg video, washing her hair? Yes. In space yes. that went viral? Well, Luca's kind of hair challenged. He's bald, okay? Let's <laughs> get it out there. And he posted this video of himself you know, washing his hair and there's this big glob of water sitting on his head that just kind of oozes down his face. Well, that gives you an idea of how the water would have behaved in this helmet. Now look at it this way. He's wearing a helmet. He can't do anything to get that water out of his nose, his eyes, or his ears. So he was in serious trouble up there. Do you, are the spacesuits all designed the same or does each astronaut, obviously it's fit to them, but are the basic parameters uniform? Well, uh, the, you know, a really short astronaut and a really tall astronaut won't fit the majority of NASA suits. The suits are parts and they kind of snap them together and then they screw together so they can sort of customize a suit for an astronaut, but does he have a spare spacesuit up there? Not really. So they've got to figure out what happened to this one. They would like to do that spacewalk to finish that spacewalk. Uh, the Russians are launching another module up to the space station later this year and they need to get a lot of wiring done before that can happen. So at some point he'll have to venture out again. Again, but it won't be before they figure out just what horribly, terribly wrong. Right. Well, and, and that which obviously leads to the question of has is NASA speculating at this point of how this is going to impact future spacewalks, or either uh, either from American astronauts, Italian astronauts, or Russians that are that are going to be going out. Well, they've got four more spacewalks planned this year, as a matter of fact. Um, this one, they've got to get done at some point, So, but they're not going to send this crew out until they figure out what happened to that spacesuit. They want to make sure this never happens again. You know what's interesting? Later today, we're going to be interviewing the next space station crew that's going up, including two Russian cosmonauts. They're scheduled to go out on a spacewalk for the bizarrest of reasons. You know, the uh, Olympics are being held in Soichi in 2014, correct? Right. Well, uh, Russia is sending the Olympic torch up to the space station. <laughs> on, and it will go out on a spacewalk with these two Russians on November 11th and literally two days later go back to Earth. 
Russian spacesuits are very different from American spacesuits, so we don't anticipate the same kind of problem, but it will be very interesting to watch this unique spacewalk on November 11th with the Olympic torch. Always a drive to go bigger and better than the last ceremony for the Olympics, isn't it? And now to, now to new heights, literally. Oh, they want to put more miles on this torch. Yes, literally right. to greater heights, correct. Wow. I, I want to listen to a part of Luca Parmitano's exchange with Mission Control when this first happened. I see deep in sweat. Aaron, I saw sweat with Netflix. Hey, Luca, can you clarify, is it increasing or not increasing? It's hard to tell, but it feels like a lot of water. So... Is he suffering any kind of effects from this today? Does he seem to have kind of calmed fears or, or, or physically had any kind of reaction to this? Well, the flight directors described his reaction as grace under pressure. Luca is very thrilled to be up there. He viewed this as a huge opportunity. He was excited about the spacewalks. You know, being an astronaut is not for the meek. These, these men and women go through intensive training survival training. They work under the most extreme conditions. And, uh, you know, he responded gracefully. Uh, he came in, they dried him off. He's still having, he tweeted yesterday, he was uh, having a little trouble hearing. You know, think of it like swimmer's ear, only when you're on Earth you can shake it out. Well, up in space, there's no gravity, so maybe they could suck it out with a vacuum. I'm not sure how they're going to solve that problem. He's talking just fine now. His hearing is still a little bit problematic. There's all that water stuck in his ear. It is amazing that you can have that kind of calm, as you pointed out, some 200 miles above the Earth's surface, and all of a sudden you have water floating around in your helmet there. Do we also know, was there a point to, at, at some point yesterday where he wasn't able to actually speak as well because the water got into his mouth? He couldn't speak, he couldn't hear. Uh, what one flight controller told me, the most heart-stopping moment in mission control when, was when fellow astronaut Chris Cassidy, who's a, who's a former Navy SEAL, by the way, uh, when Chris Cassidy said to Luca, Luca, can you hear me? If you can, squeeze my hand. Uh, that's how worried they were, because the water was filling up his ears, his nose, his mouth, so they're worried about him being able to breathe. He certainly couldn't talk, and he certainly couldn't hear. It is absolutely amazing, and certainly a heart-stopping moment, not only for Mission Control, but obviously for those other astronauts on board as well. Four more walks scheduled. Routine maintenance on the space station? Experiments? Well, most of, the, most of these spacewalks are routine maintenance. I don't know how you describe the spacewalk to take the Olympic torch out. I would call that <laughs> show and tell in a big way. <laughs> how do you write that one off, right? I'm not sure how they're going to do it, but it's going to go out. You know, Putin wants it to, he wants this torch to have more miles than any other torch. Oh, and so Je when you think about launching from Kazakhstan, you know, going to the space station and however long it's up there, orbiting Earth, you know, 17,500 miles an hour, right? So it takes you 90 minutes to go around Earth. However long, I mean, he, he, they're going to set the records with that Olympic torch on that spacewalk. Unbelievable. And usually what happens when Putin says he wants something, he generally does get it. So we'll have to wait and see how that's going to play into the opening ceremonies of those Olympics. ABC's Gina Sinceri from Houston. Thank you so you much. At the Johnson Space Center. And again, a close call outside the International Space Station. Italian Luca Parmitano, one of the astronauts there, nearly drowning inside his own helmet. Of course, we will check back with Gina and NASA for more on the investigation as it unfolds a complete report on abcnews.com. For now, I'm Dan Kleffler in New York with this ABC News Digital Special Report. This has been a special report from ABC News Digital.